we will now look at public charges. Public charges are those which are in public places and any electric vehicle should be able to go there, connect to those public charges and charge and pay and go away. It is somewhat like a petrol pump, you fill in energy, these are public charges where you fill in energy and they certainly need standardization. Now, there are all kinds of charges for two wheeler, three wheeler, huh? they are mostly for large fixed batteries, standalone chargers, slow charging stations, home, fast charging stations and bulk charging. Bulk charging is for swapping, for swappable batteries. The slow charging ones are almost always AC. Hmm? This is where you will have onboard charger which will do AC to DC and then charge your vehicle. Hmm? Fast charging stations normally have AC to DC built in. Though there are few AC chargers also, but mostly it is DC built in. So, AC to DC built in. So, they are expensive, this is inexpensive. So, you can directly connect to the battery. DC charging, you do not need conversion. All that you need, of course, you need protocols, you need to uh, do the metering and all that. Well, metering will be done in the charger, you need inside the vehicle all the protection and safety and communication saying that this is what you are doing, but this could be put. This first charging station, where will you put? This is where you will put in parking lots, in hotels offices and depots. Slow charging stations of course, you can put in public places, street corners also you can put, hmm. wherever there is a parking you can actually put. Bulk charging is for swapping, so this is only used when swapping is used. These are personal charges and they are public charges. This is an important slide tells you the communication. This is a vehicle, could be a two wheeler, three wheeler. This is what is called EVSC, electric vehicle, um, basically is a charging station, electric vehicle charging. Hmm? There is a communication between EV and EVSC. This is to guarantee safe and secure supply of energy. Then this electric vehicle, while it will charge battery on the other side, vehicle on the other one side, it will get power from the grid. This is connected to the grid. So, the, it is communicating to a central management station which is lying with the grid operator. So, that tells you okay, how many charges are there active, how much power is being drawn, is there a problem, what is the rate at which they are being built. Hmm. So, there is electric vehicle, electric vehicle supply equipment, central management system and this communication is one communication, this communication is OCPP, open charger point protocol. It handles user authorization, billing and other information related to charging. Then there is could be a mobile application and mobile application can communicate directly to CMS, you not even communicate to, it then tells you how do you make payment. Hmm? It should be standards or based open protocol. Huh? You can even sort of say okay, do not charge at this rate, charge slowly. Huh? It can even do reservation saying I am coming there, please ensure that I get empty hmm, this thing. So, what standardized charger required? Input from the grid, is it a 110 volt, if it is United States, 220 to 240 volt AC or three phase AC. These are two relevant to India. Output to vehicle, is it AC or a DC? What is the voltage range? What is the power rate? What connectors do you require? Protocols between charger and vehicle, protocols between charger and grid, 
and other things like safety and protection, power factor, mechanical and environmental requirement, EMI packaging. This is what is required. There are various standardization body which have tried to standardize. There is a society for automotive engineers, it is a United States and it is that which came up with the concept of level 1, level 2, level 3 and CCS includes V2G, it kind of done that. International Electrochemical Commission, European Union has been the at the forefront of standardization probably most common and they are called IEC 618151, system A, system B and system C. Basically, the voltage range is changed. Hmm. The system A is Chademo Japan, they in fact the Chademo Japan, system B is the Chinese and system C is the European. And of course, as I pointed out the Japan Automotive Research Institute, Guabio Chinese standard GBYT. Bureau of Indian Standards has incorporated IS 1707, IEC system A, CHAdeMO and system C along with OCPP backend. There is a lot of confusion about this, but there is something effort. And Department of Heavy Industry has standardized AC 001 and DC 001. So, what are the standard charger? AC 001, standard 230 volt very similar to what you use for refrigerator except it uses uses a industrial plug. Level 1 110 15 amperes, level 2 is 240 to 80 volt which we can use 80 ampere 19.2 kilowatt I think I have seen even 22 kilowatt and level 3 is 220 volt to 440 volt 3 phase and it gives you up to 350 kilowatt there are 7 kilowatt, 11 kilowatt, 22 kilowatt AC version, but there is a primarily a DC charger, Gee. though it does give you a little bit of AC. Uh, DC chargers, I talked to you about 15 kilowatt charger, that was a DC 001 and then 30 kilowatt to 300 kilowatt chargers are there, GBT by T, CHAdeMO, CCS 1 and 2. So, if you look at it, this is level 1, this is not relevant to India this is relevant to India, this is the AC charger hmm? and this would cost very little because the converter is inside the vehicle and this is a DC charger of course, this will be expensive and this could in India 480 volt 3 phase and one can charging load could be 50 to 350 kilowatt, you need to have voltage higher voltage. So, this is what it is same thing I am repeating CHAdeMO is up to 500 volt DC though it has recently come up with a higher version not very clear. Communication speed largely on CAN standard CAN for protocol. GBYT the Chinese one is higher voltage. So, it is pretty much done it, it was designed such that it can pretty much stay for a long time and it has a CAN and extended CAN format and the European one 15118-2 goes to 1000 volt. The difference it does not use CAN, it use power line communication and of course, it uses IPv6 very efficient, but the power line communication as opposed to CAN makes it different. All these charges, they have a huge protocols. Protocol is primarily to talk to the vehicle, these are vehicle communication, this is for vehicle uh, communication. You do hand shaking, you do charging parameter stage, what voltage, what current, then the energy transfer and shut down. If you look at GBT by T is very very similar, hmm? whereas the CCS has much more it uses handshakes, then session setup, charger parameter discovery, uh, instead of setting it up, it automatically discovers, it will do cable check, pre-charge, current demand, power delivery, welding detection, is there any problem and then session stop. So, these are the 
things that it uses and there are different connectors. This is a connector, my vehicle uses this connector, this is AC 001, this is an industrial plug used in India. Hmm? And the EV socket is this, similar to this. This is a GB by T, the DC charger, Chinese one and EVSE plug for DC 001 and GBT. This is the SAE level 1, level 2 standard and it is a CCS 1 also. It is a DC charger plus AC charger. This is the European standard, now CC 2 and then CHAdeMO and these are also referred to as IS 17017, I think standards. What about what is Bharat charger? Up to 3 kilowatt input, AC supply, 3 phase, 5 wire AC, uh, nominal input voltage 415 volts. This, uh, hmm, I made a mistake. This is, this is for DC 001, 415 volts. Otherwise, a 230 volt. This is, I think, I mixed up with the next slide, which is uh, DC 001. This is a mistake. This is not 415 volt. It's a 230 volt. Input frequency 50 plus minus 1.5 hertz. Input supply voltage failure backup. Battery backup for minimum one hour. It has a battery backup so that if your power fails, of course it won't charge, but at least it will maintain what had happened. So that if a power fails for a minute and comes back, it can resume charging. And as I pointed out, communication to EVSC uh, and CMS is OCPP. Output in this, up to three vehicles can be charged simultaneously. There is a single charger version also, 230 volt AC, single phase, double pole breaking RCD, it actually acts as a protection. Hmm. And they are breaker energized in sequence so that if anything goes wrong, uh, the three chargers do not impact each other and there is a socket readiness LED to indicate socket is ready and there is isolation so that three vehicles do not have a constant current. So, this is the AC 001 charger and then the DC 001 charger. Adaptive and control charging protection, it is designed even for two wheelers though it will less used for trailers, primary for small and medium sized vehicle. It is a 48 volt or 74 volt, 2 volt DC 15 kilowatt. The input here is 3 phase AC. So, that 480 volt comes here. Output is 48 volt 10 kilowatt or 72 volt 50, uh, 15 kilowatt. We had said the power factor has to be better than 0.9 and EV EVSC is a CAN communication and EVSC CMS is a Ethernet broadband, it has handheld communication and there is a payment gateway. All these are built into this DC 001 charger. Input three phase, I see here it is 415 volts, this is the line that is right and in same input supply. Communication EV EVSE CAN communication using DC 001 protocol which is a variation of the Chinese GB by protocol. And EVSC CMS is always OCPP. Output is 48 volt, 62 volt or 72 volt up to 200 ampere current, 90 greater than 92 percent uh, norm efficiency and power factor 0 0.90. Hmm. And we also specify two types, type 1 which is limited to 10 kilowatt, type 2 which is goes up to 15 kilowatt. So, this was the DC 001 and AC 001 vehicle. There is a way to authorize these. Hmm. So, basically you EV, EV driver scans QR code in the charger. Hmm. Huh. So, uh, that is done by the mobile app. The mobile app interacts with the, the interprets the QR code and detects the charger ID and connector ID and sends OTP messages to CMS, the central management system. Central management system verifies that everything is okay and then it gives you the command for this to stop. Now, hmm, at the same time user will have to, user will get a OTP 
they have to enter that and the charging takes place. So, this is the authorization that is done which enables the vehicle to be charged. Recently, Bureau of Indian Standards have taken initiative to define to modify AC001. So, if you see it is the same single phase 230 volt 3.3 kilowatt, it has specified the connector which is the same, it introduced Bluetooth communication with app hmm? and it said back end is not needed. So, the Bluetooth communication was not there earlier in AC001, this has been done. It has a built in meters which was there also in the AC001. It has a relay contact for socket charging and residual current drive. So, it is very, very similar to AC001 for a single vehicle charging and cost is very, very low. I have some extra slides, I will just go through that. These are the various SAE standards. Very often, um, people throw in SAE standards. So, one should generally have idea, one should need not memorize this, but should have them handy. And there are various IEC standard hmm? and these are referred to as 681, 61851, dash 1, dash 2, 1, etcetera, etcetera. All right, that is basically the charger. 